Okay, we continue in this video solving more examples on uh, electromagnetic waves using Maxwell's equations. So here we are giving the uh, phasor of the electric field, okay? Um, it's minus 2j e naught sine 0.5 beta z e to the minus j 0.8 beta x and in the, in the y direction. So the electric field is, is in the y direction and it's a function, its phasor is a function of x and z. Notice that the dependence on Z is real, okay? While this part here will then contribute to the phase of the of the electric field. So they want us to find the magnetic field as a function of time. Here we have two ways, two approaches to follow. Either we convert the phasor of the electric field to the time domain quantity, and then we go from the electric field in the time domain to the magnetic field in the time domain using Maxwell's equations in the time domain. Or we can use method two, which is start with the phase of the electric field. We use Maxwell's equations in the frequency domain to get the phasor of the magnetic field. And then we take back from the phasor to the time domain quantity, and this will give us H of T. Both approaches could, should give you exactly the same answer. Why? Because the fact that this expresses as a phasor, it means that it's sinusoidal quantity. And sinusoidal quantities, you can deal with them either in the time domain or in the frequency domain. Of course, frequency domain is usually more efficient. Okay, we'll follow method one first. Um, so this is, the, this is the electric field as a phasor. We have to convert, convert it to a time domain quantity. How I'm going to do this? This minus j... I'm going to use Euler's constant or Euler's identity. I'm going to write it as e to the minus g by over 2. Okay? e minus j is equal to e to the minus g by over 2. And j is equal to the j by over 2. So, now this is this is a phasor. This is a whole field. I'm going to multiply now by e to the j omega t. And I'm going to sum e to j omega t. I can write it here. Maybe show it to everyone. So I can uh, uh, multiply here by e to the j omega t, okay? And now we, uh, when you multiply it, you add these two complex exponents. You get you get j omega t minus pi over two. So your angle, after you take everything to the uh, the time domain, the total complex angle is j omega t minus j 0.8 beta x minus j pi over two. Or if you take j out. It's going to be omega t minus 0.8 beta x minus pi over 2. So if you take the real of that, you end up with this cosine here. So this is how the electric field looks like in the time domain. Now, if you, sub if you subtract from the phasor, sorry, not the, from the phasor, from the phase of the cosine, a pi over 2 as shown here, this means that you are shifting the cosine in the positive time by pi over 2. So the cosine becomes a sine. Okay, so this is why I got rid of this minus pi over 2, and I wrote the field as a sine quantity, sine omega t minus 0.8 beta x. Okay, so remember this identity, uh, cosine omega t minus pi over 2 is actually sine omega t. Okay, uh, and again, this is just because of the when you subtract pi over 2 like this, this means you are shifted the cosine in the positive time. So when you subtract, you shift in the positive time. When you add, you are shifting it in the negative time. Okay, before I proceed to show you how to calculate the, um, the magnetic field, uh, I just want to show you how this electric field looks like in space. So what we're going to be doing here, we're going to freeze time. So I'm going to assume that I'm taking a snapshot. I I'm, I'm just took a snapshot of the wave. So time now is a constant. And I'm going to also take a constant x, so x equal to x naught. And I'm gonna draw, try to see my field on the plane x equal to x naught. Okay, remember the field is in the y direction. You see the electric field is in the y direction. Okay, it's pointing the y direction. But it changes as a function of z. This is the z direction here. It's actually a sine, sine it has a sine profile. It's sine 0.5 beta z. And again, depending on beta, this is gonna be a fast sine or a slower sign, okay? So this is now, this is not a uniform plane wave. It's not uniform anymore. Why? Because the field, the electric field, 
it changes from one point to the other on this plane okay uh, so this is a little bit different from some of the examples we had earlier but this sort of wave exists inside uh, waveguides and as we talked about that before waveguides are metal uh, tubes or even can be dielectric structure that I use to, gu uh, to guide uh, electromagnetic waves well you're we gonna see more about that on that in advanced uh, courses uh, but this is really I want to show this the thing here so the whole wave is traveling in the in the x direction as you could see here so the whole thing is traveling in the x direction but if you try to see it's a profile you see in the z direction it draws this uh, sine profile and depending on the on the beta and the field as I said is in, is pointing in the in the y direction so it points in the y direction but it's a function of z and is propagating in the x direction Okay, now we move to calculate the, elect the magnetic field. The basic, uh, basic concepts use Maxwell's equations in the time domain as we agreed. We already got E as a function of time. So this is the equation to use. Curly is minus partial B partial T. Uh, and B is mu H. I can take mu out. Uh, now let's divide both sides by minus mu. Then partial H partial T is minus 1 over mu curl of E. Uh, the electric field has only a Y component. But remember... This y component is a function of both x and z because you have sine 0.5 beta z and you have also sine omega t minus 0.8 beta x. So if you expand, if you take this into account, you'll see that this, if you cancel this one column, you're gonna get uh, minus partial ey partial z, okay, minus partial ey partial z. And this negative will cancel with the negative here. You end up with this positive term. Now, if you cancel the Z, the Z rule and column, you get partial EY partial X. Okay. And this will be multiplying the negative sign outside. This will still remain negative. So the electric field, even though the, the electric field has only one component, which is the Y component, the magnetic field will have an X component and will have a Z component. And this is something very well known in, uh, in waveguides, in, in, in the modes traveling inside waveguides. I wrote for you here the expression for the electric field again, just to remind you. So if you differentiate this electric field relative to Z, this will give you cosine 0.5 beta Z, but you multiply by 0.5 beta, so this becomes beta. So you get here beta E naught. So this is a derivative relative to Z. And this sign becomes cosine, this sign is untouched. Okay, now we differentiate partial EY partial X. If you differentiate relative to X, the derivative of the sine becomes a cosine. This term becomes a cosine. But the derivative of the angle will give you minus 0.8 beta. Minus 0.8 beta, you multiply with 2 in e, to e naught. You get minus 1.6 beta E naught. Okay, so uh, I, 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 I did not write, I did not, I, I, what was missing here is that this term is in the X direction. And this term is in the z direction, okay? So I can maybe type it here so that I remind you that these are two components. This one here is ax, okay? And this one here is az. Okay, so we, we have the expression for the magnetic field. This is not really the magnetic field yet, it's the, the derivative of the magnetic field. So now we organize things and then we integrate in time. If you integrate the sine in time, you are going to get minus cosine. And then you divide by omega. If you integrate the cosine, you get sine. And then you divide by omega. So, um, so, so this is what's going to happen. This term now is going to become positive. And the integration is not going to add any negative terms to it. So this will be positive. This one, you integrate the sine, you get minus cosine. And these two are both positive, so this will become negative, okay? And then you divide by omega, and this term becomes a cosine. Okay, um, so as I said, you, you write, write the two expressions, you integrate the integration, the sine became minus cosine, resulting in this negative sine, and then you divide by omega. The cosine becomes a sine, and it's positive, and then you divide by omega. So this is a magnetic field. It has two components. One in the x direction, one in the z direction, and they are both traveling with the electric field. Remember, one of these components uh, is in direction of wave propagation. This component here 
is in direction of wave propagation because the wave is traveling in the x direction while this one here is is normal direction of wave propagation and it has the same dependence on z and x as the given electric field okay okay uh, we start now to apply method two method two is simply to do go from the electric field to the magnetic field through uh, the uh, frequency domain Maxwell's equations and then we convert the resulting magnetic field phasor into the time domain so let's see how we're going to be doing that this is a given magnetic field to us it's the same expression we had in the very beginning we're not going to be touching it we'll start with this Maxwell's equation this is curl E minus partial B partial T but if you assume everything is sinusoidal this becomes minus G omega B and B is mu H um, so now this is a phasor this is a phasor uh, so the phasor of H um, if you divide both sides by minus G omega mu uh, H is minus 1 over G omega mu curl of E uh, and as we agreed the electric field has only a Y component but this Y component the phasor of the electric field as you could see here it's a function of z, it's a function of x. So as, as we agreed on before, uh, you are going to get the partial ey, partial uh, x, the phasor here. And this will be in the z direction. Okay? And you are going to be getting, if you cancel the x row and column, you are going to get minus partial ey, partial z. But because you had a negative sign outside, this one becomes positive. Okay? You have minus 1 over g omega mu here. So you have these two derivatives you have to calculate. And differentiation is done um, the way you differentiate all functions. If you differentiate this one relative to z, you get 0.5 beta cosine 0.5 beta z. If you differentiate this one relative to x, you get minus j 0.8 beta e to the minus j 0.8 beta x. So I did I did the differentiation both here. So this is a derivative relative of the phasor relative to z. And this is the derivative of the phasor relative to x. Okay? And you have 1 g omega outside minus 1 over g omega outside. Um, remember, we had minus 2 j to begin with. So when you multiply this by 0.5 beta, it becomes minus j beta e naught. But if, if we, when, you have, when you multiply this minus 2 j with minus j 0.8, minus was mi multiplying with minus to give you positive, j with j will give you minus 1. j squared is minus 1. So this will give you minus 1.6 beta e naught as shown here. This is real. Well, this one is, is complex, is imaginary. Okay? So now we have these two quantities. We can start to move 1 over j omega mu inside. Remember, I just, maybe I forgot to mention this at the beginning. Beta is a constant. Okay? e naught is the amplitude of the electric field. Omega is your frequency, and mu is simply the permeability of free space, or you call it mu naught. Um, so, uh, so all this this can be something like j th minus j three. This is uh, minus five, something like that, or mi minus minus uh, three multiplied by one point eight minus four point eight. It's it's all they are all numbers. You can calculate them once you know what is beta, what's e naught, what is the angular frequency omega, and so on. Okay, the last step to do here is simply to organize all the terms that we have. You had here 1 over j, it becomes minus j. There was a j that cancels with a j here. So this term becomes purely, doesn't, it's, there is no j here in this term. Okay, this term has a j. Now we have to take this to the time domain. So how do we do it? This term is ready to be taken back to the time domain. Uh, this negative sign, you can keep it as it is. So this would be minus beta e naught over omega mu. This is a real term. You, you, you does not change anything. Give it cosine 0.5 beta z. And you then you multiply by e to the j omega t. And then you take the real part. So this becomes cosine omega t minus 0.8 beta x. So this is the first term. The second term, you take this minus j and write it as e to the minus j by over 2. So this will add here a phase shift of by over 2. Uh, so this becomes e to the minus j 0.8 beta x, and then you multiply by uh, this term here by e to the minus j by over 2. Then you get a cosine of um, omega t minus 0.8 beta x minus by over 2. 
But when you shift a cosine by pi over 2, it becomes a sine. This is why I wrote this one here as a sine. Sine omega t minus 0.8 beta x. This is not very clear, but this beta x here. Okay? Um, so this is exactly the same expression that we got from the uh, method 1 which is to convert the electric field to the time domain and then use Maxwell's equation of the time domain. So whether you do it this way or do it in the frequency domain or the time domain, you should get exactly the same answer. The magnetic field here has two components, one in the x direction, one in the z direction, um, uh, and uh, this cosine, cosine, the other one is sine, sine.